Welcome to the course Garment Machinery and Equipment. In this course, you will learn about the use of pre-production machinery in a garment manufacturing unit, the sewing mechanisms and different types of sewing machines, the use of automation and descaling devices involved in garment manufacturing and the use of post-production machines used in garment manufacturing. This course comprises of four units. The final review section tests your understanding of what you have learnt. In the first unit, pre-production machinery, you will understand the use of pre-production machinery in a garment manufacturing unit. This unit comprises of four modules and a final review section. By the end of this unit, students will be able to describe the working of automated spreading machinery used in garment manufacturing with theoretical knowledge of the functions of each parts. Describe the working of commonly used cutting machines in garment manufacturing along with the functions of each part. Practice cutting of woven fabrics using commonly used cutting machines in apparel manufacturing. Study specialized cutting machines used in garment and non-garment sectors. Review the theory behind fusing process. Identify parts of a fusing machine. Identify different types of fusing machines and relate to their use with respect to garment parts and types. The first module provides an overview of the spreading surfaces and spreading machines. Let us begin by looking at the process flow of garment manufacturing. There are three stages of garment manufacturing, pre-production, production and post-production. The pre-production stage comprises of spreading, cutting and fusing. In the production stage, the main activity is sewing. In the post-production stages, important activities include finishing and packing. The spreading process. The spreading process forms a lay by placing one or more number of fabric plies on top of one another for a required length. The length of the lay and the number of plies to be laid for a particular lay will be predetermined as per the cutting plan. The cutting plan specifies the specifications of each lay type and the number of times the same specification lay has to be cut with different colored fabric plies to achieve the number of garments required in each color and size. Spreading equipment consists of spreading surfaces that is the tables, spreading machines, pins, weight bars and fabric control devices as well as fabric cutting devices. Spreading surfaces will depend on the type of fabric, spreading equipment, cutting method and also the firm's quality standards. Spreading requires a flat smooth surface. For this purpose, normally a table is used. If the table is being used for cutting as well, in most of the cases it is being used, then it should be leveled. By leveling, we mean that the table surface has to be horizontal to the floor. The table must be constructed sturdily to bear the weight of a spread. The width and length of the table will vary with the width of the fabric and production demands. Most often, the space available determines the dimensions of the table. Spreading surfaces need to be 10 inches wider than the fabric width to allow the cutting knife to rest on the table. Spreading tables may have tracks or rails placed along one or both sides or just a few inches off the floor for the spreader to move 
up and down the length of the table. Spreading tables are usually covered with laminated or cardboard to provide a low level of friction. Special spreading tables may also have vacuum points which are used to compress the lay. Lay can be compressed up to 75 percent. This prevents movement of slippery fabrics and prevents shifting of fabric during cutting. Air flotation tables allow easy movement of lay when they are activated. Spreading tables may also be connected to a conveyor that carries the fabric to the cutting table. Majority of the commercially available spreading tables come as modules. By module, we mean that they are of standard width and length. This allows a factory to configure the length as required. Pin tables. A special type of table is used for spreading checked and striped fabrics, which is called as pin table. Pin tables consist of pins beneath the spreading table. The spreading operator can raise the pins at the points where they are required. While laying the fabric, the spreading operator pins the fabric down on particular stripe or check pattern. This allows the fabric to be spread without giving any extra allowance for block cutting. The lay can be ready cut as per the patterns if the marker is done as per check matching. Now, let us move on to the spreading machines. Spreading machines are of various types, stationary, portable or fixed and travelling machines which are of manual, semi-automatic and automatic types. Stationary spreading remains in one position that is at the end of the table while travelling machines move along the length of the table. Manual spreading machine speeds are the same as the operator's speed. They basically consists of a frame or a carriage, wheels travelling along the tracks, fabric support and guide rolls to aid correct unrolling of the fabric. Manually operated spreaders can be as simple as a roll bar mounted on four wheels that is pushed along the table by an operator. In manual spreaders, the spreading speed can be controlled by the operator who moves the machine. The cloth is pulled carefully from the fabric roll by hand and is cut to the appropriate length. Mechanical devices can be provided to facilitate the unrolling and cutting operations, but the proper alignment of the fabric edges is the responsibility of the human operator. Generally, the spreader will align the edges at one side only so that any width variation happens will happen at the other side of the lay. Now, this it is suitable for short lays and for frequent changes in fabrics and colors. It is often used in small businesses. The spreading carriage. The cloth is unwound and spread semi-automatically using a manually driven carriage. The carriage is moved back and forth over the laying table. A built-in mechanism takes care of aligning the fabric edges and smoothing the plies. This system is favored when long and broad and or if the fabric is presented in large batches for relatively large orders. This method is very efficient and suitable for small businesses. Automatic spreaders. These machines are ideal for increasing productivity and quality. These machines 
may include various features such as a motor to drive the carriage, a platform on which the operator rides, a ply cutting device, automatic catchers, ply counters and alignment shifters, a turn table and a direct drive on the fabric support and tension devices. Tension mechanisms ensure that the rate of spreading is synchronized with the rate of fabric that is unrolled. The alignment shifters are actuated by photoelectric mechanisms sensing any deviation from the required alignment. In this case, they shift the roll to the correct position. With indicators, alert the operator on any width variations in the fabric. End catches hold the fabric at the end of the lay. An overfeed device which feeds extra fabric when a fold is made. Ply cutting devices cut the fabric across the width at the end of the lay. It is usually consists of a rotary knife blade mounted on rails. Turntables. Turntables permit phase one way spreading on every trip. The turntable rotates 180 degrees at the end of the spread during dead heading that is when the spreading machines return back from the spreading to their original position, the machine may travel at higher speed. A very highly automated spreader may be preset to a selected number of plies. A sound indicator alerts the user when it has reached the selected number or has come to the end of a piece of fabric. Some machines are equipped with automatic sensing of previously marked flaws and damages. As the machine comes across a flaw, the sensor will halt the spreader, the ply cutter will cut across the ply and the spreader will reverse the direction to the nearest splice mark on the marker plan and then continue its run. Now, let us move to learn about common cutting machines. Cutting. Cutting is the process of separating a spread into garment parts that are precise in size and shape. These parts will be printed as pattern pieces on a marker which is kept on the lay. It may involve transferring marks and notches from the marker to the garment parts to assist operators during sewing. The spread can also be cut into sections or blocks which are then given precision cut. Generally, in this case, the block cut lay will be transferred to a band knife and given a precision cut. Cutting may also involve preparing sections of piece goods for special operations such as screen printing, especially in the case of t-shirts with chest prints. Cutting equipment. Cutting can either be manual or automated. Cutting depends on the skill of the operator. These equipments can be portable or stationary. Portable knives are moved through the spread while stationary cutters require the operator to position and control fabric blocks in through the blade. There are two types of portable cutting knives, mainly the vertical reciprocating straight knife and round knife. This is a straight knife cutting machine. This machine is used to cut in bulk fabric lace in an apparel manufacturing unit. Essentially, this machine consists of a straight knife, a knife guard, a base plate, a sharpening mechanism, a motor and a handle for the operator to operate it. The entire machine is switched off and on and off with the flick of this switch. 
Now we will see each part in detail. This is the base plate. The function of the base plate is that it supports the entire machine and also provides movement. The entire machine can be moved by four rollers which are provided in the base plate. The base plate has two parts, one is the squarish part, the other one is the half moon part. This half moon part is sloped in nature because when there is a fabric lay to be cut, when you push the machine into the lay, the bottom place will come above the slope and gets lifted up for cutting. This is the straight knife which has a up and down vertical motion. The distance between the topmost point of the knife and the bottommost point of the knife is called as stroke of the knife. This is the knife guard. To lift the knife guard, we have to press this handle, lift it upwards and leave the handle so that the knife guard gets set in a position or if you want to lower it down again press the lever make it down and leave it. The function of the knife guard is that it has to go and sit on top of the lay to provide a firmer grip to the machine on fabric. This is the handle the cutting operator holds the machine by one hand and pushes it through the lay giving force so that the knife cuts through the lay. This is the motor which drives the entire machine. It can be either of induction or servo type. The electrical supply is given through this socket. This is the on off switch. This lever when pressed down will activate the sharpening mechanism which will go down and come back for a whole cycle thus sharpening the blade. Now we will see it. While cutting, the operator moves the straight knife machine to position, lowers the knife guard to top of the lay, starts the machine and starts to cut. The straight knife. The straight knife consists of a base plate with rollers for ease of the movement, an upright carrying the straight blade, the power system consisting of the motor and the switch, the cutting blade which can have various edges, an operating handle, sharpening device and the blade guard. These machines are also available with a blade cooling system. The vertical knives have an up and down cutting action. Blades vary in length from 6 to 14 inches. Blade length and the adjustable height of the blade guard are factors determining the spread height that can be cut. This feature must be considered in choosing a straight knife cutting machine. The blade guard not only acts as a safety device for the operator but also holds the top flies of the fabric, thus preventing them from lifting up during cutting. Metal mesh gloves are also available 
as a safety device for the cutting operators. The cutting blade is available in various edges such as straight, serrated and wavy edge. The most commonly used is the straight knife. Wavy edges help to reduce heat generation and are used for cutting plastics and vinyls whereas saw edge type are used to cut canvas. The straight knife is also available in varying speeds allowing the same machine to be used for natural or thermoplastic fabrics. Advantages of the straight knife. This machine is most commonly used in the industry today because of its adaptability and flexibility to various kinds of fabrics and spread heights. Due to the shape of the cutting knife, it is a good choice for accurately cutting sharp corners and angles. Limitations However, it has its limitations too. It does not give very accurate cutting along the curves due to the blade shape. The broader the width of the blade, the less accurate the cut along the curves will be. As the machine enters the spread, the base plate lifts up the plies of the fabric causing a slight distortion. To overcome this, edges of the base plate are sloped and the front is curved. The base plate is the foundation that supports and helps balance the cutting machine and maintains the position of the blade at 90 degrees. During cutting, it is very important that the machine is not tilted as the cutting would not be proper. The straight knife machine can make only lateral cuts into the spread and cannot be used to cut areas from the center of the garment parts. A slasher can be used for this. It cuts into the spread from the above that is vertically without making a cut across the fabric. The operator power is affected by the weight of the machine, handle height, sharpness of the blade and the stroke. Stroke is the vertical distance travelled by the blade during its reciprocation. The supporting arm. A further advancement to the straight knife machine is the use of a supporting arm that supports the machine from the above. Therefore, the heavy base plate can be replaced by a small flat base plate which reduces distortion of plies, narrower blade therefore enabling cutting along sharper curves. Further, there are lesser chances of tilting of the blade during cutting. The rotary or round knife. The rotary or round knife is a portable cutting machine. It consists of a round blade, a motor above it and a handle to direct the machine. The knife rotates in the anti-clockwise direction. It cuts the fabric with one way thrust as compared to the up and down motion of the straight knife. The cutting capacity or spread height depends on the blade diameter, motor power and the speed. This is a round knife cutting machine. As the name suggests, it has a knife which is round in nature, a base plate just like in straight knife cutting machine with four rollers, a handle to push through the machine through the fabric plies, an on and off switch, a motor and a sharpening mechanism. The height of the cutting can be controlled by adjusting the height of the knife guard. This is the knife guard. By loosening up this screw and either taking it upward or downward, we can adjust the knife guard height. After that, we have to tighten the knife guard. The sharpening of the knife is activated by pressing the lever. Okay. 
the operator always wears a iron mesh glove on his non operating hand which is holding the fabric lay from the top as a safety measure. Cutting pitch. Cutting pitch is the angle at which the cutting device contacts the spread. It determines the uniformity in size of the pieces from the top to the bottom in a spread. Uniformity can be obtained only if the cutting pitch is maintained at 90 degree and the knife accurately guided through the lay. In case of the straight knife machine, the edge of the knife is perpendicular to the base plate. The cutting pitch is 90 degree. In case of the rotary blade, cutting pitch is less than 90 degree. The greater the diameter of the knife, the lesser is the cutting pitch and therefore, the top ply will be cut sooner than the bottom ply. If the machine is moved forward, at the same time, it will result in uneven cutting. In order to get a uniform cutting through the entire spread, that is vertically, the machine must be kept stationary and the cutter must raise the bottom place. However, this does not ensure a uniform cut. This is the biggest limitation of the rotary knife. When the rotary knife cuts a spread whose height is greater then the blade diameter, then the middle plies will get cut first, top plies next followed with the bottom plies. This is also a limitation with the rotary knife. Stationary cutters. Stationary cutters have blades or cutting devices that are fixed to the machine and the operator manipulates the spread to cut it. There are two types, band knife and die cutters. Band knife. Band knife machines have blades that rotate through a slot on the cutting table while cutting. The operator guides the fabric through either a push or a pull action towards the knife. One edge of the blade is sharpened and the blade is narrower than the straight knife which is the greatest advantage of this machine. It gives accurate cuts for small parts such as collars, curves and pockets as the turning of the block on a narrower blade disrupts the place less than the wider blade of a straight knife machine. When using this machine, space has to be left around the garment parts during planning the marker. For small parts, a template can be used as a guide. Another advantage over the straight knife is that the blade of the straight knife tends to wear out faster at its lower end which is more in contact with the fabric unless the spread is high enough. On the other hand, in the band knife, the blade wears evenly due to its action cycle.
the cutting knife is called as a endless knife or a loop knife. The machine resembles a sawmill cutter. Band knife machines are also available with air flotation tables to facilitate easy movement of the block. This is a end cutter generally used in spreading process. The end cutter has a rail upon which the entire machine is housed. This is the round knife. This is the handle. This is the on off switch. And here is the ply counter. At the end of the spreading process, the extra fabric is cut away by the end cutter by pushing the knife through the rail using the handle. End cutters. End cutters are special type of round knife machines. A small diameter round knife is placed on a rail or track with a pushing arm. This ensues an accurate straight cut. End cutters are used to cut the end of the fabric after each spread while spreading. This is a die cutting machine. The operator switches on the machine. The pneumatically controlled cutting head rises up. The operator keeps the leather the die and clicks it and cuts the leather in the shape of the die. Now you can see that he has placed the die onto the top of the leather, clicks it and he has taken out the shape. Die cutters. Die cutters are used for cutting when each and every piece is required to be cut in exactly the same shape. Dies are pre-shaped metallic outlines with a cutting edge. The cutting action is vertical. The accuracy and consistency of die cutting can be affected by the inaccurate placement of dies. Dies are in the shape of pattern fairy fairy. Dies are very useful in case of high production volumes of similar styles. Generally, small parts like collars and cuffs are cut by die cutters. The downward force is generated by hydraulic systems to press the dies through the fabric clay. Slitting die machines have blades that are used to cut intricate slashes used in pockets, for example, in well pockets. Notches. Garment parts require notches in order to align them accurately during sewing and assembly. Operator controlled cutters can be used for this purpose. However, accuracy depends on the skill of the operator. It is also necessary that the lay must be absolutely vertical, otherwise some pieces will be marked too deep while the other may be not marked at all. Special notching machines such as straight notches and V notches are available for this purpose. Hot notches have a heating element which fuses the fibers adjacent to the notch in order to prevent fraying and disappearance of the notch. It is a good choice with natural and knit fabrics. However, it cannot be used for thermoplastic fibers. It may also be available with adjustable heat control. This machine is called as a hot notcher. As the name indicates, it has a knife which is hot. It has a base plate. It has an on off switch and a temperature control. 
when you switch on the machine, you will find the light to switch, switch on. Wait for few seconds, so that the machine gets hot enough, so that it can cinch the fabric to make the notch mark. drills. When markings have to be made inside garment parts, for example, marking position of the pockets, appliques, dots, etc., drills are used. This machine consists of a motor that rotates the needle, a base plate and a long needle. The needle penetrates completely at the specified point creating a hole or just shifting yarns. Certain drill machines are also equipped with a hollow needle that carry marking fluid that leaves a mark on the fabric place. It is important that the marks remain till the particular sewing operation is over. Drills are problematic to use on loosely woven thick structured fabrics as the loosely woven structure will make the drill hole to disappear after a few hours. Marking can also be made using thread markers which carry the thread through the entire spread and then individual threads are cut. It may also be done manually on every ply using a template, but it is time consuming. This module introduces you to specialized cutting machines, auto cutters. Auto cutters are also known as computer controlled cutting machine CNC cutters. Presently, they are the fastest and most precise means of cutting fabric lace for garment production. The cutting table. The cutting table of a computer controlled cutter is made of nylon bristles. The nylon bristles are flexible. The lay is transported from the spreading table to the cutting table with the help of air flotation. Since the cutting table area of an auto cutter is relatively short, the cutting table generally touches the spreading table to form a continuous area. Thus, the lay is fed in parts for cutting by auto cutter. This flexible nylon bristle cutting bed allows the cutting knife to penetrate deeper and move freely. Also, the bristles allow air passage through them to create a vacuum. The vacuum thus created helps reduce the height of the lay by compacting it and holds the fabric in place. The carriage. The carriage supports the cutting head. It is fixed onto parallel rails that are on the side of the cutting table. The to and fro movement of the carriage is achieved by two synchronized motors. The cutting head can move on the carriage with the help of a third motor. This arrangement gives the capability to position the knife exactly. The cutting head contains a knife, motor and automatic sharpener. The motor rotates the knife and positions it along the line of cut of the curves. The sharpener sharpens the blade periodically. The knife can be lifted and plunged again to enable it tackle sharp curves and create V-shaped notches. A motorized drill 
is also available to put drill marks when required. The control cabinet. This cabinet has the computer and other electrical components that are required to operate the cutter, carriage and the vacuum motor. The lay is laid in the spreading table with the paper sheet in the bottom. This helps to transfer the lay from the spreading table to the cutting table without distorting the plate. Once the lay is kept, a polyurethane sheet is spread over the lay. The operator starts the vacuum pump and the air is sucked out of the lay and gets compacted. Most of the auto cutters can handle heights of 7.5 cm of compacted fabric. The cutting marker is fed through a floppy or a disc to the cutter. The cutting operator chooses a starting point or reference point at the corner of the spread by positioning the origin light. The cutting head receives instructions from the computer continuously and positions the knife and drives it through the fabric accordingly. Laser cutting machine. This machine produces a laser beam which can be focused into a very small spot. This high energy density when pointed on a fabric produces a rapid increase in the localized temperature. This acts as a cutting action of fabric by burning, melting and vaporization. A laser beam unlike conventional blades does not get blunted with the use but has the limitation of depth of focus as it loses energy after cutting the first ply. Because of this, the laser cutting machine is best suited for cutting single plies. The machine has a stationary gas laser, a cutting head carrying a system of mirrors that reflect the laser beam to the cutting line. The residue which gets developed due to the cutting action needs to be cleared immediately by suction. Advantages and limitations. The linear speed of cutting is very high with the laser cutting machine up to 40 meters per minute compared to the auto cutter. But the auto cutter cuts bulkier lays compared to the single plies. Due to this, laser cutting is only done when accuracy is needed. Its general applications lie in cutting of applique, home furnishings, labels and sales. The main limitation is thermoplastic fabrics cannot be cut using laser as the edges may fuse together. Water jet cutting. Water when applied through a small nozzle under high velocity can act as a knife. The high pressure jet tears textile fibers on impact. Like lasers, water also loses energy after cutting the first ply and its cutting ability is reduced. The bottom plies will be cut wider and rougher. Due to this, water jet cutting is also applied for single ply cutting. The water used is caught and drained away. Filtered and deionized water should only be used for this kind of cutting. Generally, this method is used to cut leathers. Plasma cutter. A high velocity jet of high temperature ionized gas, mainly argon, is focused at the fabric and acts like a laser cutter. This cutting is suitable for aluminum and stainless steels. Ultrasonic cutting. Blades are vibrated using ultrasonic frequencies in the 20 kHz range. The ultrasonic vibrations induce a very small movement of the cutting blade. This removes the need of a nylon bristle top 
of the cutting table. This module looks at fusing machines, fusing and interlining. Fusing and interlinings are needed for the manufacturer to maintain consistent quality as against hand operations, save time and labor, enable easy handling of small components, reduce differential shrinkage between top cloth and interlining to controllable levels, stitch, pucker and distort sewn products, create garments with a cleaner and fresher appearance. Fusing and interlining is needed for the wearer to increase durability of garments, modify slightly by the interlining the handle of the cloth, retain the garments original shape after repeated dry cleaning and washing, reduce crease recovery time. However, interlinings can also serve many other purposes including stabilize garment sections, reinforce sections which may be weakened by subsequent operations, maintain the shape of parts such as collars and lapels, prevent seam impressions, stiffen the garment or fabric, strengthen the garment or fabric, mask the transparency of fabric with shear characteristics, provide additional warmth for example quilting. Interlinings can be categorized as woven, non-woven, knitted. All these types can be obtained in either fusible or non-fusible form. Interlining consists of the base fabric or substrate onto which the thermoplastic resin is coated, sprayed or printed. Base cloth can be produced by variety of woven, knitted and non-woven materials. Woven. The main advantage of woven is that they can be cut on exactly the same grain as the pieces to which they will be applied. This is considered by many well worth the extra cost incurred by the lay wastage. Canvases of linen, wool and hair are often used for a softly tailored finish as they reshape in pressing. Non-woven. Some of these can be cut multi-directionally and are therefore very economical. They are also very resilient, have good crease recovery and excellent shape retention. For these reasons, they have replaced to some extent the traditional canvases particularly in ladies wear but also in some men's wear. The main advantage of non-woven is their low resistance to abrasion. Knitted. Knitted interlinings were developed specifically for use with knitted fabrics so that the fabric stretch characteristics can be maintained as well as controlled. However, their drapeability has made them an attractive alternate to woven and non-woven on some outerwear garments. Resins. There are several types of resins. The choice of resin is restricted by the limits imposed by the outer fabric, fusing equipment to be used, end use requirements and the precise behavior of resins in response to heat. These are the requirements of resins. A. Upper limit fusing temperature should not be higher than 175 degrees Celsius so that it does not cause damage to the top fabric or its color. B. Lower limit fusing temperature. Lower limit temperature is suitable 
because too low temperature may lead to inadequate bonding to withstand handling of fused garments. Lower limit of 110 degree Celsius is required. Leather and suede may require further lower temperature. C. Thermoplasticity. Thermoplasticity of resin must be such that change of temperature combined with correct pressure is efficient for resin to penetrate the top cloth and form an efficient bond. It should not cause strike through effect. The adhesive seeps through the right side of the fabric causing sticky patches which collect dust etc. through the top cloth. Sometimes the adhesive seeps through the back of the interlining through the base cloth. Usually the cause of strike back and strike through is the application of too much heat and pressure. D. Cleanability. The resin should withstand washing and or dry cleaning throughout the life of the garment. E. Handle. The resin should give the desired handle. F. Color. In normal end uses, resin must be white or transparent unless there are specific color requirements. Should have low dye retention properties. G. Safety. Must be harmless in processing and end use. Different types of resins are polyethylene, polypropylene, polyamides, polyesters, polyvinyl chloride, plasticide, polyvinyl acetate. Different methods of application. Resins can be applied through different methods such as scatter coating, dry dot printing, paste coating, preformed, extrusion, laminating, hot melt coating and emulsion coating. We will now learn about each of these. In scatter coating, scattering heads are used to provide an even scatter under automatic control. After scattering, the resin enters an oven, softens and is pressed against the base cloth. This is then cooled. This is the cheapest method. It does not give uniform or not as flexible as printed coatings. In dry dot printing, powdered resins fill engraved holes on a roller. Base cloth passes over a heated roller and then against the engraved roller. Powdered resin adheres to the cloth in the form of dots. Oven heating ensures permanent adhesion. Patterns of dots can vary from 3 to 12 per centimeter. Generally, lightweight fabrics require interlinings with smaller dots in higher concentration, while heavyweight fabrics require larger dot in lower concentration to allow good penetration. In paste coating, fine resin powders are blended with water and other agents to form a smooth paste and are printed onto the base cloth. Heat removes the water and dots cool into solid resin. This gives precise shaped dots and is used on interlinings in shirt collars. In the preformed method, a preformed net is laminated to a base cloth to form precise dot patterns when using heat and pressure. It is widely used for top collars of a shirt. In the extrusion laminating method, thin films of molten polyethylene are laminated directly 
from an extruder on to the interlining base fabric. This gives a stiff product. Hot belt coating produces continuous plasticized polyvinyl coatings on interlinings for leather goods. In emulsion coating, the base cloth is dipped into the emulsion, excess resin is squeezed out by passing the base cloth through rollers and drying in oven produces double sided coating. Characteristics of top cloth When you are going to choose a top cloth, you have to ask yourself these questions. Will it withstand fusing conditions? Durability of the fused products. Does the top cloth have open structure that will allow strike through, which is not desired? Does the top cloth have a pattern or surface that could damage with the pressure during fusing? B. Selection of woven knitted or non woven fusible. Different parts of garment may require different types of fusible. Woven interlinings can be used where strength, stability, and good draping qualities are required. The disadvantage is that it is costly. Knitted interlinings have the base cloth which provide elasticity. They have a natural handle which provides good resiliency. They are used in women's lightweight clothing such as blouses, dresses made with crepe, georgette and polyester fiber yarns. Since knitting is also faster, they are cheaper. non oven fusibles are cheaper, largely used for industrial purposes. C. Selection as per resin type and coating method. This depending on whether garment is washed or dry cleaned, interlining should be compatible. D. Type and quality of fusing equipment. Whether equipment uses steam heat or dry heat, steam heat used during fusing process should be at temperature higher than the heat used for steam pressing to avoid delamination. Dry heat done at the right temperature will not affect the laminated fabric during further steam pressing. It may cause a temporary change in color of top cloth which returns later. E. Cost The cost must be evaluated and balanced against factors such as desired performance of fusible, compatibility to equipment, technical services provided by supplier. Methods of fusing There are five methods of fusing. They are single fusing, reverse fusing, sandwich fusing, double fusing and top fusing. In single fusing, the fusible is on top of the cloth. In reverse fusing, the fusible is below and the top cloth is on top. In sandwich fusing, two components are fused in one operation. In double fusing, two fusibles, example fusing the front and the chest piece fusible to the front part of the jacket or coat. In top fusing, fusible components positioned on top cloth and heat is applied directly to top cloth. The main components of fusing are temperature, time, pressure and cooling. The temperature should be high enough to change dry thermoplastic resin into partially molten state in order to flow. Too low temperature gives poor flow and adhesion. Too high temperature gives strike back or strike through. Heat shock. When entering fusing zone, the fusible is subjected to high temperature. Sudden change harms fabrics such as viscose. May make the fabric brittle and even change texture. Glue line temperature. This is the minimum threshold range required for melting the glue. Temperature existing at the interface of 
outer fabric and interlining. Time Equipment should be given enough time to allow temperature and pressure to induce melting of the resin pressure. Ensures controlled and even penetration of the resin. Cooling Cooling ensures a consolidated bond or the fused assemblies. Enforced cooling ensures higher levels of productivity than if fused assemblies are left to cool naturally. Optimum results can be achieved by accurate and continual control of the four processing components. The properly fused fabric part with fusible will look as displayed. When the temperature, pressure or time is lower than required, the cross section will look as displayed. When the temperature, pressure or time is higher than the required, then the cross section will look as displayed. Fusing equipment. Fusing process can be executed by these machine categories. Specialized fusing process, hand ions, steam process. Under specialized fusing process, we have flatbed fusing press, continuous fusing press, high frequency fusing press. A flatbed fusing press is a static method whereby the assembly is fed or positioned onto the bottom plate and the head or the top plate is closed over it. It consists of two horizontal metal platens. The top platen is unpadded but the bottom one has resilient cover of silicone rubber. Heat provided by electrical elements can be on top or both platens. Pressure is applied mechanically or hydraulic. Flatbed fusing machines are further categorized as vertical action closer and scissor action closer. Vertical action machine is considered more preferable due to its ability to put uniform pressure throughout. The flatbed fusing machine is a simple version less complex and easy to operate. It is small in size and is relatively low cost allows it to be used by small clothing manufacturers. Reduces fabric shrinkage since the fabric is held under pressure throughout the fusing cycle. Continuous fusing machines. This type of machine has an endless conveyor system for transporting the assemblies successfully through the heating, pressure and cooling stages. In this system, the garment is passed through a heat source simultaneously or subsequently applying pressure. This is the side of the fusing machine where the temperature controls and the time settings through adjusting the voltage are available. This is the woven fusible now we are placing the woven fusible on to the top of the top collar part. We have placed the assembly onto the feeding section. We are feeding the collar and the fusible into the fusing zone. The fused collar now will be delivered out of the fusing zone from these rollers onto this conveyor bed. The heating systems generally used for continuous fusing process are Heating plates, these consist of two heating surfaces positioned apart with one above the conveyor belt and one below the conveyor belt. Both have separate temperature control profile. 
cylinder heating. The cylinder consists of two parts, the inner cylinder, a stationary assembly in which the heating elements are mounted and the outer cylinder which rotates around the inner cylinder. This principle ensures that the heat generated by the inner core is evenly distributed all over the cylinder mantle. Pressure mechanism. Pressure is applied continuously and evenly throughout the entire process once fed into the machine, but that pressure is just sufficient to only hold the fabric and fusing together and to prevent slipping. Actual pressure is applied at the outlet point where drums put heavy pressure on just heated fusible piece. Time mechanism. Fusing time depends on the speed of the conveyor belt. The faster the belt runs, the shorter the time. All machines have a belt speed controller which can be adjusted to get various dwell times in the heated zone. High frequency fusion thrust is used for multiple layers of fabric and interlining. The alternating waves from a high frequency generator are absorbed by material which generate friction heat between the molecules and thus distribute resin uniformly. Here the maximum height of the fabric can go up to 70 millimeter and the unit might have 30 kilowatts power consumption with an operating time of 1 to 3 minutes taking a load of 5 to 20 kilograms. Hand irons are used only for interlinings that can be fused at relatively low temperatures, low pressure and short times. It can be useful only for positioning a fusible temporarily before it is pressed by a steaming press. Steaming press. Steam applied from the head of a press is used to achieve high temperature which melts the fusing glue. The press head applies pressure and the lower part of the press of the back helps in cooling. Once the fusing action has taken place, major application of this machine is in fusible shoulder pads in men's jackets. Now you have come to the end of this unit. To summarize, in this unit you have learnt about spreading surfaces and spreading machines. You have also been given an overview of common cutting machines such as straight knife cutting machine, the round knife cutting machine, the band knife cutting machine, the end cutter, notcher, driller and reviewed the practice of cutting a lay using common cutting machines. Thank you.